2023 presentation on October 24th, a Tuesday from Chico, California. We are going to cover a new geometry today, never before understood by mankind, and now it's absolutely necessary that we obtain a spherical geometry. For over 2,000 years, we've been using linear space. That doesn't work in outer space. It works on Earth because uh, we are diluted. We're at middle scale. We're not at micro scale or macro scale. We're at middle scale. And so lines look straight. But the man whose name I was trying to remember yesterday, the magnetist, is Ken Wheeler. <clears throat> and he correctly points out that there are no straight lines in the universe. Now that's not quite true. Physically it is true there are no straight lines. Not even galactic jets, the bipolar jets that come out of quasars, which are active black holes. Even those are not straight. Everything curves. Everything is curved. So we use primitive numbers. Nobody has ever even imagined that we might have curved numbers. These would have to be normalized because there are all kinds of curves. In fact, there are three major classes of curves. Hyperbolic and elliptical are the two major kinds. Under the elliptical variety, these are named by men who don't know how to name things. Those are called mathematicians. That's spherical. The opposite of spherical is hyperbolic. And the equivalent of the straight line in curved space is the parabola. The parabola is one. There's only one parabola, just as there's only one straight line. But there are a whole family of hyperbole. Currently, the formulation of curved space invented by Albert Einstein, Henri Poincaré, Henri Lorentz, and Hermann Minkowski is pseudo-hyperbolic space. I say pseudo because I know what I'm talking about. Hyperbolic space uh, is unimaginable, but pseudo-hyperbolic space is made from straight line numbers, which is all science uses. So we need spherical numbers. And it's impossible for a human being to figure that out unless he's an absolute genius which means that he got guidance from something supernatural. So that's where we're at. This information will not be understood by most. It will be accepted by nobody. But that's my job. That's always been my job. Begin by emptying your mind so you can create a metaspace. And now we begin the way the Greeks did. This is extremely important to get linear numbers first. We haven't been deceived by nature. Linear numbers are perfectly, well, they're miraculous on Earth. The problem is, is that mankind is sinful and deluded. So that by the time we reached into outer space, which was exactly one century ago, to discover the galactic realm and beyond, within 50 years, the most insane notions about heaven were developed and now they're law, just as you are a monkey, by law. It's a very, very strange power that generates these massive deceptions. But the fact is we know nothing about astrophysics, except from our crippled linear number system. You must remember that the universe is enormous, okay? So, in order to utilize what we actually do know, we do need to begin with a linear number system. This is how to develop it. By getting the correct geometry, from which linear geometry and linear algebra and our number system is derived from an integral number system, Clear out your mind, and now draw a line. That line goes to two infinities. Because it goes to two infinities, it has a center. And now that we have the center, we can erase the line. 
Now we have a center to metaspace. Now we can expand that to the spherical line, which is like a sun ray going out spherically, which is the spherical integral of all straight lines. They're all straight, but if you rotate that line, it hits those same two infinities, right? It's not two infinities. So by drawing the straight line, we drew the diameter of a sphere. Nobody in history ever noticed that. And that leads to the solution to the infinity dilemma and the infinitesimal outer infinity dilemma, which solves the inner product, outer product, geometric, algebraic relationship that nobody in history has ever solved. As the diameter of a circle, that's pi, right? If it goes all the way around and comes back to its source on a periodic cycle, that's tau, but that's actually an irrational system. We now need a rational system because the universe is rational. It's not irrational, okay? The universe is not irrational. It has to be balanced. It's humans that are imbalanced. So when you have this straight line, use Archimedes' principle to find the center of the line. Now you don't need the line. When we draw the straight line, we get the point, and that's the center of unbounded spherical space. Correct? So now we have a center point to an unbounded sphere. Now we need the correct number system for the universe. The line that we drew we discovered that it has a center. That's zero. That would be the center of linear space. The ends are infinity, and now we know that that's one infinity. But the straight line hits infinity in two opposite directions, correct? So that zero has a very special property in linear space. It's the center of a 180 degree valent number system. And that system begins with one. The smallest number is one. The smallest linear number is one. So one is the smallest number. Memorize this term. Linear spatial separator. Now how did you get from zero to one. You added one to zero. So that's the definition of the line. It has an operator called add, and it has no other operator. But there's no such thing as multiplication. That's a two-dimensional operator. And there's no such thing as division, which makes no sense at all, except as the inverse of multiplication. So everything you were taught in school is um, if it's going to be true in any way, it's not true geometrically. Okay? So your whole linear algebra system is shut full of holes the way you and I were taught it. Well, I'm going to teach you the right way to start, which is this way. You begin with empty space, you draw a line, you discover the Archimedean center, then you draw the radial line to make an unbounded sphere that has a center that's not zero. We never used that line to make the metric. That's where humanity went wrong, is, was by being deceived by our frontal vision. Now, it was a divine deception, because that's how we got linear numbers. And as I'll be showing you later, as a corollary to this proof sequence, we had to get the linear numbers first. The reason is, is that those form the basis of the rational number system, which is the system that the universe uses. No university teaches that. This is the university that you need right here, right now. This is the beginning of real geometry, the recovery of geometry and the forwarding of true science. You have a center that is not zero. I said all of that in order to make sure that you get that. 
That's a zero? No. That's on the line. But it was a center between two infinities. That's the diameter of the sphere. Now we have a contradiction because it's an unbounded sphere. So whatever that line did in going off to two infinities, we just proved that it went to one infinity, right? Because when you go out from a point, you can't make a line. You can only make a ray. And so our line, our linear system of plus and minus numbers is a delusion has nothing to do with reality. And it took a long time before negative numbers were discovered. Look it up. It took centuries before the negative numbers were accepted. It was thought that they were of the devil. They're not, okay, but in a sense they are. And then zero took a shitload of a long time to discover and learn how to use right. And we never learned how to use it right because zero does not belong to anything except add. The only reason we have zero is so we'll have a starting point to get to one. And that's called the index of linear space, positive one. John Horton Conway's Tree of the Surreal Numbers demonstrates that on day one of his number system, which proved the definition of the number for the first time. I discovered how he extrapolated the wrong way on day three. We don't need day three. We only need days zero, one, and two to get everything we need about geometry and numbers, which nobody has ever figured out correctly. And we were taught a delusional system. We're using the zero one line, very simple. It's magnificent with add. It's a closed operation. Addition on the line is closed. And you can add subtraction if you want the negative numbers. You ever seen a negative distance? Oh, they'll teach you in the physics class. If the spring goes this way, it's positive, but when it comes back, it's negative. No, it's not. Everything in the universe is positive. It also doesn't use zero, and we're getting to that. So we have a center point with no number attached. So we have now a point with no value and an edge with no value that's the spherical unbounded edge to our metaspace. Remember, this is metaspace. And here's the genius step. We now use a special form of number. So the number at the edge, we're going to give it a name. Now, what's the number for the center? We need a number for the center. We're going to say that it's the reciprocal on unity, and that's the axiomatic step that breaks the deadlock in mathematics. The number at the edge we can draw as a fraction, the lazy eight and the line, and underneath it is a one. We call that infinity over one. That is a rational, imaginary number. The reciprocal, which is when you flip them, that is the infinitesimal center. And that's the only point. And it's not a point, but it is a center. Only it's not going to be the center of our space. This is the most difficult mental exercise you will ever endure. We now have two numbers, one at the center and one at the edge. The one at the edge is infinity over unity. That is the number one. That's where we get the idea of a unit. So I'm on firm ground. Infinity over one is the number at the edge, and it's an imaginary number. And now you know what's at the center. It's one over infinity. When you put one over infinity at the center of the system, the metaspace, that is called a geometric point. Instead of using add to make a line, we can now use multiply to make a sphere. When you have infinity over one, 
At the edge of unbounded space, which is no longer unbounded, we have a number at the edge. We're saying that it is imaginary. And of course it is. 1 over infinity times infinity over 1. When you multiply the number at the edge with the number at the center, so what is it? It's a sphere. What's its value? 1. What's inside? Numbers less than 1. What's outside? Numbers greater than 1. We now have a number that's an imaginary number that bounds inner space. That's a match on physics. That's a match on what Roger Joseph Boschkevich discovered as well. You now have two imaginary numbers that establish bounded spherical space, and that is the new geometry. And now we need the number system for the new geometry that describes real space. This is the real universe. When you have a one component number system, so you have a imaginary center. That's a match on physics. So that's correct. And there's no such thing as zero. That is definitely correct. Instead, you have a number system no longer based on the additive identity. Ooh, look it up. The additive identity. What is that? Zero, yeah. But what are we doing? Multiplication, right. What's the multiplicative identity? Dumb shits. It's one. So there's your new number system right there. I told you. If you think you'll get this and it'll be easy. When you multiply these two numbers, now why are we doing that? Take a look at the line again. When you have a line and you make the center and now you need an index for linear separation, that's positive one, right? positive one, and then you can make all the numbers because that's your index. And there are no fractions. It's just one, two, three. That's called linear separation. And you can measure anything with that. All you need to do is change the metric on one. Whatever is the actual distance that you have stored in Paris in a freezer somewhere that shows what the distance of one is, you could, you could have a distance of one that's a light year. But then you measure in light years, one, two, three. But you don't use fractions, because that doesn't work on the line. There are no fractions on the line. You know why? It's division, you shithead. I'm talking to your professors, not to you. So we want multiply, which does not use zero, because zero is the additive identity, and the line is the derivative of the sphere. We don't want the derivative. We want the integral. That spheric space is integral numbers. So we need a two component number, minimum. It's exactly a two component number. This is the genius of the creator, is the only way I can, if you don't like that, you're not even human. Richard Dawkins. So that's, that's just the way it is. Just as the line gave us linear numbers, which gave you your goddamn cell phones, that comes from linear numbers, which has an additive identity and an index of one on the operator add end of story. That's day one. Day two, it splits according to John's tree. It goes from zero, zero to one, negative one. Notice the valence. And then you go up on the positive side. So it starts at zero, zero, which is the IEE -E definition of zero, by the way. Double zero, yeah, with no valence. An insane number, but you gotta have a center. Double zero, which is called the double null. It splits to one, negative one. That's the linear number system on add, because one and negative one add to zero. Now you go up the positive side, it splits to two and one half. According to John, he's a genius, so you better fucking believe him. 
two and one half. You notice anything about that? That's two over one and one over two. That is the first counting number in the universe, okay? We'll circle back to that so you're sure of it, and Max Planck has a lot to say about that counting number. That is the index of quantum space. It's also the index of spherical space. So the first number in spherical space is a two-component number. This is going to hurt your head, I hope. One of the numbers is 1 over 2, comma, 2 over 1. What does that multiply to? 1 over 2 and 2 over 1. It multiplies to unity, correct? Yes, and there's the beginning of your number system. That is the index of spherical space, which is multiplicative divisional space instead of add-subtract space. So we call it multiplicative space instead of additive space because additive is only for the line. Multiplicative is only for the sphere. 1 over 2 times 2 over 1, what does that equal? They make a new number, 1 over 1. So there's a 0 that produces the linear number system. From the linear number system, you get unity on the positive side. It's no longer split. You throw out the negatives. The universe does not use a linear number system. You have 1 over 2 and 2 over 1. That is the spherical index. Just like positive 1 is the index for the line that comes out of the center point. Linear spatial separation has an index of 1. There's nothing less than 1. So when you start with the index of 1, which comes from 0, so that you have somewhere to start, you no longer need 0. You have an index of 1. That is called unity. From that number, you get the numbers, not from zero. Zero is an imaginary number from which you start the indexing of linear separation. But when you get from zero, which is not a number, to one, which is a number, you now can begin the rational number system. Rational? Those are two component numbers. And the very first one is 1 over 1. But in spherical space, that is the equivalent of 0. I did not say that 1 is 0. I said that 1 over 1 is the number from which you begin to get your index. 0 is not a number, but 1 is. 1 over 1 is not a number. But 1 over 2 is, and 2 over 1. Now see the split? The split is not linear, though. The split is on a spherical surface, because the spherical surface is 1. We just proved it. The sphere is halfway between the edge and the center. It's actually harmonically halfway. It's not really half. <laughs> We don't have the right word, but there is a right word. Learn it. It's the harmonic center. So now we have two centers. The imaginary center, which is 1 over infinity. That's the replacement for 0. We think that we can reach 0 in linear space. Ridiculous. Absurd. Insane. We use 0 as if it were a number. It's not a number. But here's the interesting part. In spherical space, one is not a number. It's, it's a necessary part of the system, though. Just that you can't have an index of one on the line without a zero. So zero is 
a very special number in the linear system. It has to be there. But you never use it. Because if you add 2 and negative 2, it goes to 0. Well, what's that? Well, nothing. Now, in the universe, there's no such thing as nothing. You know what there is instead? If you cancel everything in the universe, what do you get? One. That's the universe. You can't cancel everything in the universe, but if you could, it wouldn't go to zero. There's no such thing as zero. You think about that in dream time tonight. That goes deep. That's uh, metaphysics. We don't need that here. But I'm just telling you, it all fits. It makes sense. That one is the base number of spherical space. But the strange thing about the sphere that is completely unlike the straight line is it has an interior. And in the next lecture, we're going to go into that. I'm going to go th straight through this. Please excuse the fact that I've raised my voice here. I, I, won't, I won't be alive very much longer. And um, I received a comment. And uh, I am simply not going to accept negative comments anymore. I'll erase them. You want to know anything? You pay attention from now on because I'm going to give it to you straight. No more stories. But in the next lecture, we're going to go on with a new number system that's the actual number system that predates Euclid. You can forget the straight line logic system that you were taught. I have the right number system. This goes straight to quantum mechanics and solves the cosmological problems. Stay tuned. This is Anagalactic.